Adding an enclosure to your 3D printing setup to control humidity is the ultimate step that you can take to protect your filament from moisture. Keeping your filament dry will help you to achieve more reliable, high quality prints time and time again. So less waste of material and frustrating print fails. It can also help to avoid issues like clogs and weakened prints as well. So today we're taking the Bamboo Lab AMS Lite to the next level by adding an enclosure for ultimate humidity control. If you've been struggling with filament issues or just want to keep everything running smoothly, this upgrade could be a game changer. Let's dive in and see how it's done. Hey, this is Rohan. Thanks for tuning in to Creatorific. As mentioned in the intro, today we're taking a look at the ultimate upgrade for the Bamboo Lab AMS Lite, and that's this enclosure that helps control humidity. Specifically, I'm performing this upgrade on the larger A1 3D printer, which works in combination with the AMS Lite. And my AMS Lite is top mounted on my A1 versus sitting off to the side on its original stand. I didn't really see any videos covering top mounting for this enclosure, so hopefully this comes in useful for others. Let's get started with sourcing the 3D print files for this upgrade. So head over to makerworld.com or you could open up the Bamboo Handy app on your phone and access Makerworld there. But for this upgrade, I prefer to do it from my computer so that I could better control the parameters within the Bamboo Studio Slicer. Within Makerworld, pull up this ultimate filament spool enclosure for AMS Lite upload by Supergrapher. This upload contains 10 different build plates, uses a little over half of a kilogram spool of filament, and would take just over 19 hours to print total. You can also find detailed written instructions accompanied by photographs if you scroll down as well. We can now just send this over to Bamboo Studio for print, but first a quick message from our sponsor. PCBWay is an awesome company offering custom prototyping and fabrication services using a variety of different methods. Just click the PCB Instant Quote button on their main page and input your order details to receive an on-the-spot pricing estimate. After receiving an accurate quote via email and confirming any design questions, you'll then be able to finalize your order with recipient and payment information. Project designers can also earn a commission anytime their share projects are sold. Plus, right now, PCBWay is hosting their seventh project design contest where community members have a chance to win cash, hardware, and coupon prizes. So be sure to get your entries in soon to take advantage and check out their PCB instant quote section to get started with your order today. Okay, so let's get back to our project and we left off loading our models into Bamboo Studio. Okay, now we're able to see all the objects on the different build plates that we can 3D print. We don't need to print all the build plates though, nor do we need to print all the objects. The set of covers for instance on plate 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 you only need to choose one of these sets depending on how your AMS light is set up, whether it's vertically mounted or horizontal. For plate number 8, these are the parts that will house the hygrometer. You'll only need one or two of these options, not all three. If you do choose the one with the two openings though, don't forget to print the cap for the backside. Plate 9 has the desiccant holders which gets housed inside the enclosure to absorb moisture. There are two different types of desiccant holders to choose from, the short one that holds desiccant packages, or the tall one which holds desiccant beads, so the choice is yours. What you see here is only enough to enclose one side of the AMS light, so you'll need to double up on your selections to complete the entire AMS light enclosure. The material I've chosen for my enclosure will be this clear PETG filament from Overture. I've also chosen a light gray PETG from Overture as well, which I think will nicely accent the original color scheme of the A1. After setting the print parameters accordingly, we can slice our object and send them to print one after another. If you're enjoying this content, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to this channel as well as turn on the notification bell. I really appreciate each and everyone's support and it helps to continue to make content such as this. Okay, now that we're finished printing, you can see laid out here everything that we need to complete this upgrade. We have our bottom buckets from plate 1 and 2, which will house our filament spools. Our covers, in my case from plates 3 and 4 since I'm mounting horizontally. The housing for the hygrometers, which I decided to print the dual version for the front side so that I could detect both the interior and exterior humidity. The desiccant holders, which I decided to use the version that uses desiccant beads. 
By the way, this is the disc can I'm using for this. It's a rechargeable version that you can revive once it's saturated by heating it up in an oven or microwave. It'll last longer and it'll give you visual indication when it needs to be refreshed or changed. We've got our clips and grommets for fitting our parts together. A couple of these brackets for joining the rear enclosure and front enclosure together for stability and our hygrometers for accurately measuring humidity. This version is from the Bamboo Lab store by the way, and they're the same ones featured in the bill of materials on Maker World from the uploader. I've provided links for everything that I'm mentioning in the video description by the way, so that if anyone's interested, they could easily access it. If you're wondering about the prints in the bottom right corner of the screen, they aren't technically part of this upgrade and weren't provided by the uploader, but I decided to add it in anyways to help organize the Bowden tubes of the AMS light. So that summarizes all of the parts that we need for this upgrade. So now let's jump into the assembly. For this piece here, you want to make sure that the thicker part that hangs lower is pointing downwards when it clamps the cover in place. For these pieces, you need to pay special attention to which holes you're plugging and which holes you're making pass-throughs. I'd suggest just referencing your AMS light. And quick tip, if you're enclosing both sides, they should not look identical. The holes should be filled opposite. For me, when I inserted the hygrometers, they were a little bit loose fitting, so what I decided to do was just add a little bit of super glue to secure them in place. As a less permanent solution though, you could try the hygrometer adapter ring available in the print profiles. Just repeat these steps for the second side of the enclosure, and once done, we're ready for assembly. So, as I was about to assemble this, I realized I was missing a key part for this installation, and that's the AMS Lite top mount short screw. This version of the screw replaces the original and sits flush, allowing the enclosure to be installed without any issues. I'll first remove all of the spools and Bowden tubes from the AMS light to get access for this installation. Next, I'll go ahead and replace the original screw with the short screw from the print profile of this upgrade. I'm going to start with the backside so that I can finish off with the front. Carefully remove the spool holders with a firm but gentle tug. We can now mount our assembled enclosure buckets in place by fitting them over the rods of the AMS holders. Now we can replace the spool holders that we'd taken off, taking care to match the colors. After repeating those same steps for the other side of the AMS light, we can then add these brackets to the top of the enclosures to join them together, giving them better stability. Now I'm going to replace the original Bowden tube guides for the AMS light top mount with these more functional ones. Now we can go ahead and replace our filament spools. It's also time to load our desiccant holder, so I filled mine up to about this level and then put the spill proof lid on. The desiccant holder slots really easily and securely into the enclosure. We just need to repeat the same steps for the other side, then we could put our covers on and latch them closed. And that's it, we're done. That completes the installation. So immediately after this upgrade, I witnessed the humidity dropping. Major kudos to the designer as well because there's so much attention to detail in this great model. Let me know what you guys think though, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, see you then. Thank you.